The University of Iowa has welcomed a new and quite unusual author to the UI Main Library. And later, the fight for the Weaver Center continues. After a year apart, one Hawkeye is drawn back to the sport that she loves. We'll tell you more in sports. The beautiful fall weather has finally come this last week and will continue. Stay tuned for this weekend's forecast. All that and more coming up on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. tuning in to this Thursday, October 18th edition of DITV. I'm Mackenzie Cooper. And I'm Susanna Kloster. The University of Iowa announced on July 10th the closure of the UI Labor Center. The Labor Center offered non-credit courses to adult leaders on topics such as leadership, labor laws and economics, and more. On Wednesday, a rally was held on the Pentecrest criticizing not only the closure of the Labor Center, but the university's decision to do so without the input of other UI governments, such as UISG. President of UI Students for Human Rights, Anna Clauser, spoke on, to the crowd on what the Labor Center meant to students. If the Labor Center is defunded, the money will not return to undergraduate students but be absorbed into the law school. Furthermore, University of Iowa students need the Labor Center. Workers have raised us, workers have taught us, and we are workers. Workers are entitled to health, safety, fair income, and fair treatment, and none of those things are possible if workers do not have access to education. In an interview with the Daily Iowa, University President Bruce Hale said, quote, I passionately believe in shared governance. Shared governance does not mean shared decision making, end quote. President Harold says also, he also takes blame for closing the center, citing state funding cuts for, as the motivator to do so. $1.6 million has been rewarded to the UI Auburn Center for their work in the humanities. Two Andrew W. Mellon Foundation grants will be put towards bringing various Latina, American, and Hispanic speakers to the University of Iowa the next two years. This year, a roaming seminar titled Imagining Latitudes, Articulations of National Belonging will highlight Latinx humanities in addition to film. Film Scene is, offer, is partnering with the Auburn Center to show Latinx films, and next year you can expect four one-day seminars and two conferences covering similar topics. The grants will also be used to fund opportunities for UI graduate students. One minute, three minute, and five minute stories are short edition specialties. A new literary kiosk is, call is calling the University of Iowa's main library home through November. The kiosk dispenses any one of thousands of short stories free of cost at the push of a button. First unveiled at the Iowa City Book Festival earlier this month, the literary kiosk powered and built by the community-driven company, Short Edition will be making its rounds to Iowa City, Coralville, North Liberty, and Cedar Rapids Library later this year. Be sure to pick up your own short story before it's gone. And we're having some beautiful weather that's feeling especially fall-like. Yes, definitely. I mean, last year it was so rainy and cold, and this year, or this week, it's been uh, definitely more sunny. So let's toss over to Dylan to see what we can expect this week. Dylan? Thanks, Mackenzie and Susanna. I can definitely agree with you. These last few days have brought some beautiful weather here to Iowa City, and just at the right time. As Hawkeye fans and alumni swarm into Iowa City for all the homecoming festivities this weekend, they will be greeted by the delightful weather that students have been enjoying for this last week. Visitors to Iowa City will be able to see the sun out and lighting up the buildings in downtown. They can also see many students walking from class to class as the fall colored leaves gracefully fall from the trees. Now luckily, these sunny skies continue today as well. This morning, we will have a temperature of 44 degrees and we'll get up to even 59 degrees as the day goes on. As we look into later tonight, we will also have clear skies and a temperature of 47 degrees. Now moving into our extended five day forecast, tomorrow we will see a high of 62 and a low of 43 with partly cloudy skies. Now Saturday, we get a little colder. We still have partly cloudy skies and a high of 50 and a low of 27 with some strong winds at game time for the Hawkeyes. Sunday, we come back to sunny skies with a high of 50 degrees and a low of 38. Monday, we have partly cloudy skies with a high at around 60 degrees and a low in the 30s. 
Tuesday, we go into the mid-50s for our high with a low in the lower half of the 30s, but we will have sunny skies as well. Well, it looks like we have a mostly beautiful weekend coming up other than those cold temperatures and strong winds on Saturday. So let's just sit back and appreciate this fantastic fall season that we are having here in Iowa City. Mackenzie and Susanna, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Dylan. A Homecoming Week highlight is bringing a rising rapper to the University of Iowa Pentecrest. DITV arts and culture reporter Kaylin Cluck is in the newsroom to fill us in on Skull Productions' annual Homecoming concert. Yes, that's right, guys. Tomorrow night, hip-hop artist Lizzo will be taking over the Pentecrest in a free concert put on by student org Scope Productions. And maybe you're already a Lizzo fan, or maybe you've never heard of her, and you're not as familiar with the alternative hip-hop scene. And if that's the case, no worries. I've got you covered on everything you need to know for Friday's concert. Take a look. I do my hair talk. If you're looking for a confidence boost, Lizzo is the artist for you. For this year's homecoming concert, Scope sought out an artist that would appeal to a wide audience with a distinct style all her own. You know, Lizzo is nothing but distinct, you know what I mean? You can't mistake her for anyone else. I put the sing and single, ain't worry about a ring on my finger. Minneapolis-based rapper has been at it for years, releasing numerous albums and EPs that burst with empowerment. Her music is both spirit lifting and body positive. We think that Lizzo is a really fun, new, up and coming artist that people are gonna enjoy a lot. Lizzo will be joined by opening act Lavish, a rising rap group from Des Moines. It's local talent, you know, they've, they've performed at Blue Moose here quite a few times. A huge amount of work goes into transforming the Pentecrest into a concert zone. So in a word, hectic, you know, we're running around trying to do last minute preparations, marketing, making sure that everything's in place for this artist. But overall, Scope can't wait for Iowa City to party with Lizzo. Sometimes artists reach out to us, other times we reach out to them. Um, in this case, we reached out to Lizzo's camp and then she was really excited to come. And so that concert will begin at 8 p.m. after the homecoming parade wraps up. And it's easy to see that anyone near the Pentecrest at that time is going to see a really entertaining show. So have a safe and happy homecoming week, everyone. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Kaylin. The University of Iowa dropped funds for the UI gardeners after an ongoing proposal to build a garden plot on the UI campus. The funding was cut as a part of a recent university-wide budget cuts. The proposed plan was meant to create a more student-accessible garden closer to campus. The group was promised land in the, two, in the 2016 year near North Hall for the new garden and was scheduled to be built fall of 2017. However, earlier cuts delayed the project. UI Gardner's current garden is four miles away from Central Campus and has no electricity or running water. There's nothing more Iowa City than writing and wrestling, and it seems like the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences agree. Cultivation, writing, and wrestling in Iowa City captured the attention of the Upper Midwest Regional Emmy Awards and won the Emmy for a cultural documentary. The 24-minute documentary was filmed the weekend both the UNESCO City of Literature Conference and when the United World Wrestling Freestyle World Cup came to Iowa City. The film was produced in collaboration between Think Iowa City and Des Moines marketing agency Trillix. Cultivation is looking to be aired by Iowa Public Television. And we're in for a treat because this weekend's homecoming and Hawkeye football is back on campus. Yes, I'm excited. It's been about a month since we've uh, had a home game. And I'm really excited to get back into Kinnick Stadium and, of course, to wave to the kids. I mean, come on, it's the best part of the game. <laughs> yes, it is. So let's toss it over to Kim to see what we can expect from the Hawks this weekend. Kim? Thanks, guys. I'm so excited to be back in Iowa City this weekend for a home game. As Like you said, it has been a month, and I'm just so ready for it. As the Iowa football team prepares for the homecoming game against Maryland this Saturday, they'll have to do it with some important hawks on the sidelines. We have Daily Iowan pregame editor Adam Hensley in the newsroom with your Iowa football injury update. Adam, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. So let's get right into it. Ivory Kelly Martin didn't play against Indiana because of a concussion he had against Minnesota two weeks ago. What's his status for this weekend? Well, this weekend, Ivory Kelly Martin, he's good to go according to head coach Kirk Ferentz. I don't expect this to be a game where he gets the bulk of the carries. Instead, I can see Torin Young and Makai Sargent uh, kind of balancing that rotation because both those guys did very well against Indiana last week. And he's not the only one defensively. There's still a bunch of injuries. Where are the holes, uh, where are the holes on defense there? Well, for the third straight week, 
um, I was going to be rolling with uh, a pair of freshman cornerbacks, their starters, Riley Moss and Julius Brents. Those guys are going to start for Iowa this weekend. However, uh, Kirk Ferentz said that Michael Ojemudie and Matt Hankins are getting better to close to that 100% area. So that's good for Iowa. In the linebacker department, Nick Neiman uh, is scheduled to make his return to the field, which is huge for that defense. And how are the Hawks going to exploit Maryland for the game on Saturday? Well, the Terrapins are a team that really likes to run the ball. Um, over the last three games, they've just averaged 16 pass attempts per game while they averaged 38 runs. It all starts with Ty Johnson, Maryland's running back. He averages 8.1 yards per carry, and he's one of the best backs in the Big Ten, both in the run, the run game excuse me, and the receiving game. Um, as a team, Maryland averages just around 245 yards per game on the ground. So if Iowa wants to get that edge, it's got to stop the run. That was Adam Hensley live in the newsroom with your Iowa football injury update. Thank you, Adam. Now over to the softball team. Iowa has a new transfer in the program, but her story is different than most. DITV's Jonathan Rawson has a story. Sophomore pitcher Sarah Lehman is making a return to the sport she loves. After taking a year off to play volleyball, she is more than ready to return to softball. Um, I really missed it, and I came and watched their game, and I was like, I don't know, I felt like a piece of me was kind of missing. That's because Sarah had been playing varsity softball since she was in eighth grade. She was also a four-year letterman in the sport, as well as basketball and volleyball. Oh my gosh, she's just athletic. I mean, you, you know she was a three-sport athlete in high school and was able to, to go to college to play volleyball. And when we got a chance to watch her this last summer, I'm um, actually pitching for the women's league, we knew that uh, we had to have her. To turn Sarah from a women's league pitcher to a division one pitcher, the Iowa staff has an abundance of coaches that work with her. They're really awesome. They help me like with so much and they, I don't know, they're very, very hands-on and I have like three coaches helping me all the time still. So. Our pitching practices, you know, we go every day with her Monday through Friday and, and seeing the levels that she's been able to accomplish in her pitching and the confidence being back on the mound. With all of this improvement, Hawkeye fans can expect to see Sarah in the first or second spot in the Hawkeye rotation. Reporting from the HTRC, this has been Jonathan Rawson, DI TV Sports. Now since fall softball ended in early October, Sarah and company will have to wait until spring to compete again, to make, so make sure that you tune in in the spring for more updates on her and the Hawks. But the DITV pregame show will be back tomorrow with Bo Bowman and Lucy Rodine to give you the rundown for this weekend's matchup against Maryland. Guys at the desk, back to you. Thanks, Kim. It'd be hard not to notice Hawkeye homecoming is this very week, but it can be hard to know where and what activities are happening. We here at DITV want to make it nice and easy to live on to that Iowa spirit. On the Pentecrest, starting at 6 this evening is Iowa Shout. Singing, dancing, and performances are geared towards all things Hawkeye. Following right afterwards is the homecoming coronation and ending the evening an improv show from the campus activities board hosted in the black box theater of the third floor of the IMU. The show starts at 10. Sounds like it's going to be a pretty exciting weekend. Yes, I agree. Maybe I should give the improv a shot, you know? Yeah, I think you can yeah. do it. Yeah, maybe it'll be a, a new uh, career goal. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you for tuning in to this Thursday morning edition to DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all the latest news between uh, Monday through Friday. And if that is enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news on Stands Now. For DITV, I'm Susanna Kloster. And I'm Mackenzie Cooper. Have a great day, Iowa City.